So I'm going to run through some quick introductions so we can keep it moving along. The goal of this session is to make sure we're a little bit fun and that we're not interactive at all. We're going to be mostly talking at you, unless you have some good questions for later. Uh, and that we, we keep everything fast moving. We want you to walk away with a few takeaways of what people are doing today in kind of mobile tracking. All right, so, and I forgot my Johnny Carson card somewhere. I lost my prop already? Oh no, I have them here, okay. So we're gonna do a panel. We'll start with some comments first, and then we'll do a kind of speed round Q&A. Um, and maybe I will do a really quick introduction for you guys. So Daryl Shaper used to be my boss when I worked at a company <laughs> called Yellow Book, so we suckered him into coming up on stage. Um, now I'm gonna guess EVP of digital? Just VP. SVP of digital. Um, and now the company's called Haibu. It's not called Yellow Book anymore. Um, also Dave Coburn. Uh, is here. Um, Dave, based out of Santa Barbara, yep. right, for Invoca. Um, Dave's a product guy. I, again, I should have wrote down your titles here. Apologies. Product guy's good. Oh, look at that. This is, well, then I'll just point at people. John Busby is the SV, SVP at MarchX. If, if you've been to a local conference ever, you've probably seen John Busby on stage. He's a prolific speaker. Uh, and Ty Martin um, from iCrossing is wearing the striking green shirt, which is almost as striking as my purple sweater. Um, and that is, that is everybody. So we're going to do a uh, kind of a, a few questions about just in general how you guys are using um, call tracking. So before we do, I'll set it up a little bit. So most of you in this room, whether you're a brand advertiser or you're an agency, has been doing tracking for a very long time. If you're on the local side and you're in SMB, you've been doing call tracking for a very long time. If you're maybe a big retailer or you're an agency that's managing, um, people with brick and mortar locations. Call tracking might be new to you, so we thought, let's get some folks from the local SMB space and let's get some folks from kind of the, the enterprise space and let's talk about how we can get uh, call tracked and it kind of ingested into our, our search and social world. So that's the idea for the panel. So the, the first thing I'll do is actually just throw it um, right to Ty. So the question, how do you approach mobile and call tracking and what are some of the tactics you guys use at iCrossing? Sure, yeah, well first, thanks for having me. And, and for anyone who's not familiar with iCrossing, um, we're a first full service digital agency. Uh, we're based in New York, but I'm here in our San Francisco office. And I lead our national search media strategy. I've been there for about seven years. Uh, we, we work with both, Mar both MarchX and Invoca for call tracking, um, depending on the client. And uh, you know, I'm looking to give you some insight regardless of whether you're someone who just is looking to potentially test the waters, as well as whether you're someone who's really sophisticated and looking to take it to the next level. Um, so as far as you know, how I approach it, um, it's cautiously like anything else that we think about for our search program because we have limited bandwidth, our client has limited bandwidth, you know, we consider our responsibility to vet everything and make sure that whatever activities we're doing are the ones that are actually going to drive the KPI and drive the bottom line, right? Um, but I have to say that for clients where they have a call center that can accept leads or can make purchases, I've been astounded at the incremental volume that we get by setting up call tracking. And, and I think it's an important point to say incremental because this is not just about taking credit for something, it's about getting the intelligence that we need so that then we can spend in these very specific areas and maximize the overall total for our spend. Um, you know, so, so from a tactical standpoint, you know, I guess I'll just go straight to, to what I would consider to be sort of one of the you know, outstanding clients, right? So, you know, and a client who does this pretty sophisticated would be a client who, you know, first off, is deploying phone numbers in a lot of different places. You know, this is not just about putting it in your call extensions, even though that is certainly a huge, huge volume of source of calls, um, but it's also about thinking about, you know, should this be in my headline? Because a lot of times it should be. Um, should this be a call only ad? Because again, like a lot of times we've found just incrementally greater volume by doing call only ads instead of giving the option of going to the website. Um, you know, the other place that you really, really need to be using it is on the site. Um, could be easy if you are using SEM specific landing pages, because, you know, great, that's, that's there. Um, if it's just the general site, it gets a little bit more complicated because you'll have to have a, a code snippet on the site that dynamically switches out that phone number for your trackable phone number. And that can be a conversation that might last a year long with the site administrators because you know, they're a little bit you know, reluctant to place that kind of code. Um, but to the extent that you can get that tracking in place, you know, it's, it's been really worthwhile for primarily um, 
you know, home services clients, you know, people looking for, uh, you know, how to repair something in their home, that's something people like to pick up the phone. Um, insurance clients, you know, there, we have some insurance clients where it's 70 to 80% of all responses now are coming in over the phone instead of just the web lead form. Um, and yeah, I mean, just a, a variety of other types of clients. I guess entertainment and, uh, and telecommunications would be another one where huge, vast majority come in over phone calls. Um, yeah, and you know, just to give a little bit more detail as far as that perfect state. So you got the phone numbers, you know, deployed, but then it's really important to know what happens on that phone call, and that's where most marketers fall down. You know, it's pretty easy to know how many calls happen. You know, Google can give you that information for free, and et cetera. Um, but most clients are not satisfied just saying, well, we, you know, we estimate that since this call lasted nine minutes long, it must have been a purchase or you know, things like that. So you know, it's really necessary to get the CRM integration, which is where the third party tracking providers add a ton of value, just one of the few places, or one of the many places. Um, yeah, and then, and then actually know what happens, whether the lead closed, whether that person went on to buy a lot over the next year. You know, like that's really what the KPI should be. So that, yeah, that's what I got for right now. Yeah, great. So I'll actually just ask the same question to Daryl. We'll have to shift our thinking a little bit um, in terms of small business. There's a number of agencies in the room today that manage hundreds or even thousands of campaigns, tens of thousands of small business campaigns, which I'm sure to some folks managing 10 and, and feeling like you're going to fall over from managing those 10 sounds insane. Uh, but same question to you, Daryl. I mean, how do you guys approach call tracking? How do you use it in the small business space? So first, I just want to say thanks to the Kenshu team. Wow. Incredible place and incredible weather. Please don't grow, outgrow this, uh, this place. It's a, it's a great day and letting us get outside. Um, so Haibu, many of you may not be familiar with. We're a traditional Yellow Pages company that's transformed. We're global, so we're in the US, UK, Spain, and Latin America. And we do manage tens of thousands of customers um, in terms of their search budgets. And then we also have you know, the traditional Yellow Pages. So based on traditional Yellow Pages, Internet Yellow Pages, the team pulled some numbers for me. We manage 175,000 unique phone numbers and 1.3 million calls last month. So a huge number of calls and phone numbers that we're tracking and recording on behalf of our customers. So um, I originally I think the topic was a little bit about mobile, and please, I. I'm no guru. You, there are smarter people at big companies and big agencies that know much, much more than, than I probably know. So I'll start with the basics. I think there's sort of a prerequisite, especially as, as we get into mobile. And the other thing I was thinking about is it's a crazy time. Like I've been coming to these kinds of events for longer than I care to admit. But uh, we talked for so many years about the year of mobile, right? It was for 10 years we were waiting for the year of mobile to hit. Well, it's hit, right? There is such this radical transformation to mobile. So the first thing that I think is a prerequisite for everybody now, and far too many SMBs don't have this, is a mobile landing page with a huge button for our, our folks that says click to call this number. You know, Because in our space, we deal with our clients tend to be attorneys, dentists, uh, roofers, plumbers, lots of these services that you were mentioning, Ty. And so for them, the currency of what we need to provide for them is often a phone call. The currency is, is really, hey, how many phone calls did you produce for me? So the first thing is get that good landing page. Again, being around a long time, I've made the phone number bigger and bigger and bigger on, on the home page, and it's never not worked better when I've made the phone number bigger uh, over time. So Making that easy, not having too many options, but sort of just a phone number, directions, hours, three buttons on your, on your mobile landing page can be very effective. So that's prerequisite. Now, you do need to measure the number of calls. A surprising number of small businesses out there don't count how many calls they actually get. And then once you partner with one of these kinds of, of call tracking providers, you can both count the calls and you can record those calls. Recording the calls becomes incredibly important as well because particularly for us in the selling process, we're selling yellow pages some of the time. A lot of these tracking numbers are related to a yellow pages call. 
people don't believe that anybody still uses the yellow pages, but when you show them, here's the qual, here's what they, they wanted a plumber and they called you and they had you come out. Here's another qual, a plumber, they wanted you to come out. So we prove to people that there is still value based on recording those calls. That's sort of step one. Step two, I think, as we get into this age of mobile being so important, is actually starting to have enough dynamic phone numbers, just get two, understand how many of those calls are coming from mobile and your mobile landing pages versus how many of those are coming from desktop and traditional, um, traditional laptop, whatever else you want to call it. We're seeing enormous results, and I've talked to some other people, but we're seeing lower cost per clicks and certainly lower cost per calls with <coughs> mobile. And so there's this moment in time where mobile has got some great opportunity. So you need to understand where those calls are coming from, whether they're coming from mobile, mobile or not. So that's sort of phase two. Third phase, I would say, that you can start to get in is analyzing a little bit more sophisticated stuff, like what times of day are your phone calls coming in? So you can begin to change your bidding strategies based on the fact that it turns out that all of our calls are coming in between noon and 7 p.m. And in fact, those clicks that we're buying aren't converting to calls in the morning for whatever reason. But you can find out that kind of data. You can also use the call recording and some of the technologies that exist out there to understand the value of the call. So the first step of that is how long did the call last? But you can actually see in some of the tools that MarTex has, for example, the interaction of who was talking, how long that goes on. And so you can get hypotheses about whether that's a high quality sales oriented call from that. Or if the call only lasts a short amount of time and the person on the other end talks and, and then it hangs up, they're probably calling, I want a job, you know? I'm looking for a job. Hey, this isn't the right number to call for a job. <laughs> Uh, it may last more than the 20 seconds that you wanted it to last, but it probably wasn't the kind of back and forth interaction that you're looking for. All right, and then finally, sort of, and we do this for a small number of customers, have actually been running some search marketing for us as a company to drive website sales. We did this in this particular example. But using these kinds of tools that, that these guys provide, you can also tie back the keyword that actually drove the call. So it essentially, again, I won't get into the details, not that I even could probably do a great job of getting into the details, but it ties back the time of the call to the search that was going on at that exact moment. And so it's not incredibly precise, but it's better than the old days. At my last place, we would build dynamic phone numbers for categories of keywords. So even though we had thousands and thousands of keywords, we had maybe 30 dynamic phone numbers for the categories, so the individual keyword that actually drove that in there, we had no clue. Um, and so this is the next level of getting more sophisticated. Um, so those are the ideas I had. I um, hope that helps. Great. So what I want to do now is maybe throw some questions at you and give you a very short amount of time to answer them. So we can <laughs> get through a decent amount of questions and we can keep everybody awake after we sweated it out there, uh, putting these videos together that we hope actually will uh, upload and show. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to throw some questions at you. We actually have a clock, so we're going to try to put 30 seconds on the clock. I'm going to ask a question. We'll start the clock just to make sure no one, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you guys have exciting short-winded answers. Uh, <laughs> so the, the first question, so let's see. How about John? We'll give you the first question. Okay. Um, John from Marchex. Actually, let me, let me give you some time to give a little Marchex plug first and tell people who Marchex is. Oh, sure. So I, I run the research team at Marchex. We're a call measurement company. We, we try to avoid saying call tracking due to, due to, due to what the, uh, you know, the NSA <laughs> is maybe doing. Um, <laughs> Good point. But I, I, I run the research team. And just to give you a sense of, of scale and why calls are so important to mobile, our platform uh, measures about 350 million phone calls each year. And the super majority of those calls are from mobile. And so increasingly, it's becoming a really important part of, uh, of mobile search and digital marketing in general. Great, and let me throw a question at you now that uh, 
So in addition to the SMB space, so I know Daryl talked a lot about what you guys are doing for kind of the SMBs and provisioning um, of numbers. I know you guys work with the Fortune 500. I mean, what about working with some of the bigger clients uh, in terms of uh, sophistication of a single account? How is it different than working with kind of an SMB player? Sure, okay, I'll try to do this in, in 30 seconds. I'm channeling my, my high school debate mm -hmm. here. So for, um, for a company like Bank of America, they really want to understand calls by product line by keyword. And so it, it's really getting more what's the, than the duration of the phone call or how many calls, but what type of phone call. And for like a, a national cable provider, they're very interested in knowing which calls were conversions. And we use a, a feature called Call DNA, which provides sort of a digital readout of the call without listening to it. And that's how we optimize. Wow, amazing. We wrapped it up with one second left. You guys can't see the clock. It was amazing. We need a loud, like, ah, that goes off. Um, what was that? Oh yeah, why don't you, yeah, why don't you come up here and be the public timer? Um, okay, so my next question is for Ty. So Google, you mentioned Google. They've released some call tracking stuff. It's free. Why wouldn't you just use that stuff and, and save right? Yeah, I mean, so so what they released is something that actually, I mean, a lot of people have had access to and sort of a beta version for like four years. Um, is where they have a code snippet that you can put on your website, and it'll switch out the phone number, and you'll see in AdWords how many phone calls were made on that site. Um, and that's great if you're only looking to track the number of phone calls. But you know, like I said, almost every client is you know looking for direct response. Um, so that doesn't have transparency. Like we need things like the Annie, the automatic number identif identifier, to match up with the CRM system and actually track direct response. You guys are amazing. We don't even need the dinger noise. Someone should ding though. Uh, three, Daryl. So okay, most agencies don't have as many clients as you guys. How many clients does Hibu have in general, not just for search? Several hundred thousand. Okay, it's hundreds of thousands of clients. So uh, if you can give them one piece of advice, if they're struggling to manage scale, what's one piece of advice you would give them in 30 seconds? Wow, that's a hard one. I, you know, first of all, you have to have automated systems. To some extent, we have an advantage because, for example, in my world where we have Again, to stick with the plumber's example, we deploy exactly the same keywords, the exact same negative keywords, the exact same match types across that a plumber in Des Moines, Iowa, and in New Braunfels, Texas, where I happen to live, you know, they get exactly the same thing. So that really helps us move at scale. Templates. Ding. Excellent. We finally got a ding. Um, so uh, David, so before I put you on the clock, let me let you talk about sure. Invoke a little bit. Sure, uh, I'm with Invoca. We do call marketing automation, and that involves everything from that dynamic number insertion that we've been talking about uh, to you know, deeper analytics uh, up through conversation intelligence, which is something that John touched on, which is you know, really, I think, the way to sum it up is think about what Pablos was talking about this morning. Take everything you know, learn it, and then deconstruct it, and now let's see how we can put it all back together and make it interesting. And, the reality is, is that calls are no longer an offline component of campaigns or a part of the channel or, or the way uh, people interact. It, it, it can all be digitized the way everyone in this room would expect things to be digitized so that you can analyze it, report it, act on it, um, use it in your uh, retargeting and figuring out what people's intent is. Um, so combining it with your, your DMPs and other things. So there's, there's just, it's really kind of a whole new world with calls, and that's why sort of the old moniker of call tracking doesn't really fit anymore, because it just, it just doesn't even come close to touching on sort of what's possible. So, you know, that, what's happening in the next few years, I think, in the space is, is going to be really exciting. Great. We didn't even put you on the clock for that. Um, I, sh I should mention my original idea. If you haven't noticed, I think there's four uh, call tracking companies here, so uh, Telmetrics and If by Phone. Um, look. Call, right, call measurement uh, companies are here. If by phone, telemetrics are here as well. My original idea was to put them all on stage with like boxing gloves and just have them all. Fun. Um, but uh, they wouldn't agree. So instead, we're doing a speed round with There's questions. billions of calls, so I think we, there's There's plenty of calls to go around. You'd all be punching me because I keep calling you call tracking company. <laughs> okay, so uh, I should ask you an actual question uh, in 30 seconds. Sure. All this call tracking is, is kind of easy, though, right? You're just recording calls. So what else? can we do with call tracking that might actually be uh, interesting? Sure, I think uh, you know, we have a, a, a product called Signal, which uh, again provides that conversation intelligence. It's not just did the call happen, uh, what was the result of the call, 
uh, but what happened on the call? What, what was the conversation? What did you learn from that that you can easily and quickly digitize and then uh, insert into your reporting analytics to build on and develop uh, that relationship with that customer going forward um, or to learn how to better handle that in the future? Uh, so I think uh, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities like that with that awesome. data where it's been a, really a black box until now. Awesome, John. Same question to you. What, uh, what can we do better? Oh, um, well, I think with, with call measurement, you can answer a lot of questions that the CMO has by analyzing phone calls. So outside of um, keyword attribution, you can understand things like what features are somebody calling about, what gets them to book a hotel room, or, um, or something that we've been studying recently, how often do consumers swear when calling a business? <laughs> So we'll be publishing that, that study later this year. So really, you can, you can learn almost anything uh, from a phone call. That's definitely debate club with three seconds to spare. Uh, so that's like an improved you know, net promoter score. Most people use net promoter score if you're at a big company. This is like a, a better version, like the, the how many times do your clients swear <laughs> when they call you uh, to talk to you. Yeah, and score. you can help them optimize the script too. You know, call, call center script by source. There you use go. Use that kind of intelligence. You're yeah. hired. Um, <laughs> Maybe the NSA should be listening. <laughs> um, okay, so um, my next question. Ty, let me ask you a question. In 30 seconds, what's the most surprising thing you've learned thus far from your call data? <laughs> um, I mean, so surprising is I would say that the volume of people who are willing to go to the desktop computer and then look at the phone number and type it into their phone to make a phone call. What I'm saying is don't discount desktop call tracking. Uh, you know, for I'm thinking of a again like a telco company where we ended up getting like a huge volume of calls from that desktop number, and that was back when you were only paying a dollar per call all day long. So yeah, that's that's definitely a surprising thing in the data. Daryl, uh, great job at 30 seconds. <laughs> Daryl, so what's the most surprising thing that you have learned from your call data? You know, I think it's back to something I mentioned before. I think a little bit to the opposite of what you're seeing we're seeing this opportunity to get calls via mobile at cost that are lower than what we're seeing on desktop side. So I think there's a moment in time where you can capture calls via mobile um, cheaply. I will go to David. So David, yes. everyone hates, I mean, everyone hates dialing and getting the, you know, press one for sales, press two for service. And I used to hear those are <laughs> yes. going away because no one wants to talk to machines and we want to talk to people and right. anyway. So don't people hate these things? And it, are we seeing growth in these automated systems? So uh, I don't know that people hate them, uh, but yeah, they're, they're still around in some cases, but they definitely are antiquated, right? I mean, with, with, with that dynamic number insertion, you can pull forward all kinds of rich data, the referring URL the keyword uh, if it came from search. You can, even, you can even grab the cookie from the landing page that they might have come through. So you can bring all that data in in real time before you actually even connect that call to the salesperson. So in that sense, you can, you can treat your customer. I think uh, it was Rob with Facebook maybe that mentioned earlier, you know, we're really trying to treat people like people and not like pixels or things right. like that. So I think you know, there's an opportunity to do that today with the technology. Excellent. Uh, okay, last question, and then if there is a question, think of it now, and you can raise your hand, uh, and Aaron will, will come grab you for questions. If not, John, you can talk longer than 30 seconds. Okay, <laughs> um, <Thanks. clears throat> So, John, I mean, the, you mentioned, if you don't know, John uh, runs, the, uh, runs, manages the Marchex Institute, which is kind of the research arm of Marchex. He mentioned it quickly before, and they put out some interesting stuff. What's the most interesting thing, other than swear words, uh, that you guys have learned uh, maybe in 2014? Uh, well, that's what I was going to go with. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to beat swear words. <laughs> well, I, I just I continue to be, to be surprised at um, how high conversion rates are for people who call. In the in the click world, we're super pumped up when conversion rates are in the are in the high single or mid single digits. But people are so in, incentivized to purchase when they actually pick up the phone that uh, that in my previous life analyzing. It was always like a, like a bunch of depressing depressing insights, and now it's always pretty much giving uh, giving good news back to the client. So I think that's that's the the thing that continues to surprise me day in and day out. Awesome. What about the opposite of the swear words? Didn't y'all do something on the most polite state? 
<laughs> we did we did do something on the most uh, polite state. I'm trying to remember which one that which one that was. <laughs> I don't we, remember. We had I think some it was questions. Iowa. We, oh, was it? We had some questions about. Uh, we had some a lot of questions about the study, but none of them were about the politeness. Were, <laughs> everyone wanted to know why Ohio was the the state where people cursed the most. Ah. We called it a flyover state earlier, so I think, yeah, that, I think that it was in that block. Reason. I don't really know any of the countries there, so I, didn't, I just call them countries. <laughs> <laughs> They're countries, right? The independent, the flyover states? Okay. So anyway. That study was that probably done before burning? LeBron came back. Right. Uh, any questions for the panel before I let them go about tracking calls? We got one in the middle. You could yell it out. Just kidding, Aaron's gonna get there anyway. There you go. This so happens at every conference, don't worry. Fair enough. <laughs> so my question was just around, what do you say to the, you know, the VP of the CMO who says that their phone number is actually a brand term for them? So like, let's say 1-800-MATTRESS, right? They don't wanna serve a dyna dynamic number. What do you say in that situation to you know, have them engage or consider call tracking? So we run into that a lot. I mean, honestly, we don't argue with them all that much. Uh, we say, okay, fine. You don't want to do call tracking, you don't have to do call tracking. We think it, it makes a difference, but there are customers who refuse to do it. They love their, you know, 444, 444 number, and uh, they're not going to go away from it. Yeah, I could I'd build on that maybe a little bit. That, um, what we would do is, is suggest a test and otherwise look at different channels. So maybe they don't want to change that on their homepage, and certainly for organic search, for example. But um, if they're running specific campaigns and landers, lots of times you know, that's where that campaign, that funnel goes and it ends on that unique uh, campaign. And in that instance, they're willing to consider that. And often once they see what's possible with that, they, they kind of succumb to the, all, all the great things that you get along with sacrificing that, that one brand piece there. Yeah, some of the most sophisticated marketers around uh, Allstate, ADT, have branded um, branded phone numbers, and they use those as, as measurements of brand recognition, but not as, as measurements of specific campaigns. And, and as, as a practical matter in Google, Google's gonna replace your phone number anyway. So it's starting to become, uh, it's starting to become necessary. Great, there's a question right behind you, Aaron. There you go. Well, I'm one of those call measurement companies. I just wanted to respond <laughs> in different ways. Like, how many times do you buy a product from a company? So you tend to maybe buy it once. You're not going to know the number anyway. So CMO really isn't understanding that if it's a call, if it's a customer acquisition campaign, that person isn't going to remember that number. That number is for branding, for service, whatever. But when I'm in buy mode, I'm going to go and search. I'm not, if I remember the number, then I'm not searching anyway type of thing. So it's, it's a, it's a bad question, but we don't tell them it's a bad question, but it's basically how many times you acquire a customer, they don't need to know that number, and if they did, then you don't need to advertise. We wouldn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, there's a question up front. And we'll make it our last one. So my, I'm still running into clients where they um, don't even see the value of calls from the cost of operating a call center. Um, they just don't see it a valid investment. I'm sure you guys run into that, so I'm curious how you address that. Yeah, I, I wanted to plug a, a tactic, so I think this is a good question where I can plug this tactic. Uh, a lot of companies have a huge proportion of their calls as customer service calls, right? And, and I think that's a lot of the apprehension that, that CMOs often have is, why am I paying for 95% of my calls to just be customer service when I'm really only interested in paying for sales? And uh, you know, there are a couple tactics now that, that we use to take care of this uh, for the most part, and the one that I really want to plug is the way that you can use remarketing lists for search ads for this purpose. Because if you can build a, a remarketing pool of people who are existing customers, you know, by putting the tag out on their logout button for their online system, or you know, on the purchase confirmation page, all these different places where you can, the, the email confirmation, you know, build, build this list of people, you can exclude those existing customers from the search ad and you know, get a lot higher proportion of sales calls, or you can repurpose that sales ad and, and cross-sell or upsell and that, that kind of thing. Great. All right, well, please help me thank these guys for having a wonderful time.